Hey guys, in this video, I wanna to talk to you about the best ways to naturally normalize your estrogen levels. We talk a lot about estrogen here on the channel as a primary culprit or causative factor for a lot of degenerative diseases. In fact, if you dive into the physiological effects of estrogen, you come to find that all of the unpleasant negative side effects of excess estrogen tend to be very similar or resemble the pathology of aging, stress, and disease in general. However, in mainstream medicine, estrogen is often referred to as a female hormone. And although it can contribute to the feminization of the body, that is not the only thing that estrogen does. From what I observe in the research around estrogen, some of the more sound physiologically backed research is that estrogen seems to belong to more or less a class of stress substances again, given its effect on the body, particularly when it's in excess. And unfortunately, as I say so often, due to the increasingly stressful nature of our modern world, the increased rise of the industrial food system, various industries in general, particularly plastic industries, heavy metals, as well as other toxic industries, and even the increased consumption of polyunsaturated fats, things like grains and of course, alcohol and other phytoestrogen substances, most of us, when it comes to normalizing estrogen, would probably want to take proactive steps to lower estrogen. Most people, particularly modern people in the West, have estrogen dominance because of the excess estrogen and the estrogen mimicking substances in our environment and in our food and even our water. And really quick before we get into the tips on how to lower estrogen, I just wanna cover some of the primary ways in which estrogen in excess can damage your health. Looking at some of the most fundamental, the effects of estrogen on respiration or your mitochondria's ability to produce energy, one major thing that estrogen does is actually steals or robs oxygen from the mitochondria. This leads to a condition known as hypoxia or oxygen deprivation, and this can cause cellular or oxidative stress. And this also causes abnormalities and aberrations in normal cell growth and adaptation, which is why excess estrogen is so implicated in breast cancer, prostate cancer, and a wide variety of different cancers. Something else that estrogen tends to do is cause a stress response in the body. Estrogen actually has a negative feedback loop with cortisol stimulating the adrenal glands to stimulate a stress response by secreting cortisol. And together, cortisol and estrogen are incredibly catabolic to the body. Cortisol in excess generally wastes or breaks down the body. It particularly attacks the thymus gland, which is an important gland for immune function. This is why cortisol in excess tends to be immunosuppressive. But cortisol also interferes with proper respiration by inhibiting your cell's ability to utilize glucose, a primary source of energy for the production of ATP. So in combination, estrogen and cortisol are highly devastating to the health and functioning of your cells, tissues, and organs. And another major negative key feature of excess estrogen is its ability to cause inflammation. Estrogen can actually cause edema or water retention, increasing your cell's affinity to water, which basically dilutes the cell, causing the various cells in certain parts of the body to lose their integrity and their tone. So it causes the cell membrane integrity to decrease or degenerate. And this can cause a wide variety of systemic issues. Everything Thing from vascular issues, varicose veins, issues with normal and healthy clot formation, so it can cause bleeding issues, as well as a wide variety of cardiovascular issues. So these are just some of the foundational negative effects that estrogen can have on the body. If you were to dive into these three primary negative effects alone, you could tie estrogen into almost every health issue imaginable. So I'm not gonna get lost into the details of those. If you just, again, look at these primary negative effects, you'll see how estrogen tends to cause almost every degenerative health issue you could think of. With all of that being said, let's just get into now some of the primary things that you can do to actually lower excess estrogen in your body and normalize your hormone levels. So again, starting off with some of the more fundamental ways to balance the estrogen in your body, let's take a look at some of the major organ systems and glands that basically regulate estrogen in your body. So when these organs and glands are functioning normally, estrogen levels tend to be kept in check. And the first is going to be taking care of your liver. One of the primary jobs of your liver is to actually metabolize and destroy any excess unused hormones in the body, particularly 
estrogen. So if the liver is not functioning properly, if it's damaged or impaired due to toxins, alcohol, or even excess estrogen, this goes both ways. Too much estrogen and stress substances can damage the liver, but it could also be caused by, you know, improper and adequate nutrition. So the liver doesn't have enough energy to manage its functions. Then the liver's not going to be able to properly metabolize or eliminate excess estrogen in the body, causing it to build up not just in the liver, but the entire body as a whole. So one of the most fundamental things you could do to normalize your hormones, if you have hormonal imbalances, particularly excess estrogen, I would suspect greatly that there's some sort of liver impairment or liver issues going on. So definitely be sure to reference this video for some systemic holistic tips for improving the functioning of the liver. The second major thing you're gonna to wanna to do to regulate and normalize the estrogen in your body is take care of that thyroid gland. And this is because the thyroid hormone is actually the major hormone that regulates and opposes estrogen. So these things work interrelatedly. If your thyroid hormone is low, estrogen is going to be left unopposed and therefore high. Vice versa, if you have tons of exposure to estrogens in your life and in your diet, that excess estrogen will tend to oppose thyroid hormone being one of the major contributing factors to hypothyroidism. So this is sort of a double-sided goal. On one hand, one of the best things you can do to improve thyroid function is to minimize estrogen exposure. At the same time, there are other things that you can do to improve thyroid function other than lower the estrogen that could help increase thyroid hormone and its activity and therefore oppose estrogen. So for example, a few things that help boost thyroid hormone function are going to be getting basic nutrients. The first is going to be glucose or adequate carbohydrates. The thing is your liver converts 70% of your thyroid hormone into the active form. So if you're not getting enough dietary glucose, then your conversion rate will be significantly lower by 70%. So in other words, you need glucose to convert the inactive form of thyroid hormone, thyroxine, into its active form referred to as T3. So one of the worst things that I think you could do for proper thyroid function is go on a long-term, low-carb, ketogenic, sugar-free diet. Again, without glucose, the conversion rate of thyroid hormone decreases by 70%. So one of the simplest things you could do is avoid the low-carb diets and get in the right carbohydrates. In my understanding, the best for the thyroid is actually fructose. Fructose not only stimulates the conversion of thyroxine into the active thyroid hormone, but it also synergizes with thyroid hormone and sort of acts like the active form T3 in the body. So one of the best forms of healthy sugar, despite popular opinion in dogma, is actually getting high quality fructose. It is actually inversely related with liver disease and diabetes. So that's generally just a lie. If you want to learn more about the truth of sugar and its effects in the body, definitely watch this video. Otherwise, you know, don't take my word for it. Do some of your own research, learn a little bit about the physiology of the thyroid, and you'll see that one of the best things you could do is actually consume healthy carbohydrates to increase the conversion rate of thyroid hormone. In addition to that, the thyroid needs iodine and selenium, but I'd be careful to supplement with iodine because anything over 150 micrograms is going to be incredibly toxic. And I've never really seen an iodine supplement that has a safe and non-toxic dose in it. So the best way to get your iodine is probably going to be through shellfish or raw dairy. And in addition to the iodine, shellfish also has selenium in it, which is also necessary for the conversion of T4 to T3. So there are additional things you can do to improve thyroid function outside of these couple of basic tips, but definitely reference this video to get a greater understanding of the thyroid. And I'll be creating future videos, of course, and I'm always talking about thyroid on these videos. If you're looking for a particular herb for thyroid function, I would definitely check out KSM 66 ashwagandha, which actually increases the production of thyroid hormone and its conversion. Moving along, my third tip for you for regulating your estrogen levels would be to try anti-aromatase herbs and substances. So aromatization is an enzymatic process where your androgens, like testosterone, become estradiol or estrogen. So obviously this not only robs you of androgens leading to testosterone deficiencies, but it also increases your likelihood 
likelihood of estrogen dominance. And there are a few particular herbs and supplements that are clinically proven to stop this process in a safe and effective way. The number one is nettle root. In clinical trial, nettle root's anti-aromatase effect is so powerful that it decreases estrogen levels to nearly indetectable levels. So that's one of the best herbs for dealing with excess estrogen. In addition to that, agaricus mushroom in the presence of apigenin as well as milk thistle and the compound silymarin have very similar effects in its ability to inhibit aromatization and lower estrogen. Next, my fourth tip for lowering estrogen levels in the body would actually be to get the fat soluble vitamins in your diet, vitamin A, D, K2, and E. These are actually all the natural antagonists to estrogen. So a lot of the times when people go on vegan diets per se, or they avoid the consumption of good quality animal products, they tend to become deficient in these fat soluble vitamins, which are really only bioavailable and abundant in animal products. For example, you can get vitamin A from plant sources. You can get it from sweet potatoes or carrots. However, it is in its carotenoid form and too much beta carotene can actually lead to a phenomenon known as carotenemia, which is basically vitamin A toxicity. However, getting the vitamin A from the retinol or active form is very easy to do from high quality animal sources like egg yolks and beef liver. Not only do only about 40% of people even efficiently convert beta carotene into retinol, but even the small amount of people that can efficiently convert it, the thing is you would need to consume so much of those beta carotenes to get the amount of retinol that you need that even though you're converting it, you'd still probably run into anemia or vitamin A toxicity. So it's safer and more effective to get your vitamin A from these animal sources. Not to mention that something like an egg yolk or beef liver tends to have all four of these fat soluble vitamins in them in their most bioavailable form. And my fifth and final tip for lowering the estrogen in your body would be to of course, lower the estrogen exposure in your life. So obviously, if you're doing all of these things that I've mentioned so far, but you're continually exposing yourself to estrogens through your lifestyle and diet, then your attempts will be greatly mitigated or nullified altogether. So one of the best things to do is become aware of and knowledgeable of the various estrogenic substances and foods in your life and in your diet. And of course, minimize your exposure or contact with them as much as you can. So to learn more about some of the most estrogenic foods and substances in your diet and in your life, so not just what you're eating, but what you're exposed to in your surroundings, definitely be sure to watch this video for more information. You can also just hop online and Google xenoestrogens and phytoestrogens to learn more. So there you have it. I talk a lot about estrogen and its anti-health effects on this channel and estrogen as a primary cause for a lot of degenerative health issues that you guys are always asking about. So again, I think estrogen is one of the primary root causes of most health issues today because of the fact there's so much estrogen around us all the time. And I normally give tips here and there for lowering estrogen, but now you have pretty much all of the most important ways or the most effective ways to lower the excess estrogen in your life, start to balance your hormones and hopefully improve your overall health. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for future videos if you haven't already. And if you're interested in learning more or supplementing with any of the anti-estrogen herbs I talked about today, be sure to check out our blog and our online tonic herb shop in the description box below.